So how's your 2008 PTSD coming along? If you don't know what I'm talking about, Tim Pierce here with the Pierce Group at Keller Williams Realty. And I'm gonna answer a very important question today. There are five reasons this ain't 2008. So we, uh, we've gotten a lot of questions from friends and clients and acquaintances about, you know, what is going on? I mean, this feels just like 2008. I've got 2008 PTSD. I don't want to go through this again, right? And they're asking questions about how the real estate market is in general. So undoubtedly, this is a crazy time. I mean, we've never experienced anything like this coronavirus. Uh, let's face it, we've got gyms shut down. Heck, churches aren't even holding services. We've got uh, restaurant workers completely out of work and struggling uh, to make ends meet. A lot of people struggling to make ends meet. Um, and, and, and teachers trying to figure out how to how to teach kids online. I mean, my kids are at home doing online classes. I'm working from home right now. Um, and I'm sure it's created a tremendous amount of anxiety in all American households. And uh, the one thing I'd like to you know, provide today is maybe just a little bit of, of confidence and, and information of, of why this is so different than 2008 as it relates to the real estate world. So we're gonna talk about, again, five reasons why this is not 2008. And we're going to go through some details on why that is. So I'm going to do a quick screen share with you guys here. And I'm going to share with you an article that we put together um, real quick. And I'm going to, I'm going to, this will be linked below. You can access this. You can look at these graphs on your own. You can read through it in more detail, but I'm going to kind of burn through it and give you the high points from it. So uh, with people having PTSD from the last time, they're still afraid of buying at the wrong time. Completely understandable. Right. But let's talk about some of the facts. So, number one, mortgage money is just not flowing the same way it was back then. I mean, let's face it. They were giving mortgages out to five year olds. OK, maybe that's maybe that's a little ridiculous. Maybe that's an exaggeration. They weren't giving mortgages out to five year olds. But let's face it. You could do a no doc loan. I mean, there were so many things that you could do to get an easy mortgage. In fact, I bought my first house in 2003. And it was a piece of cake. I mean, I was a brand new real estate agent. I had very, very little income and I was shocked I qualified to buy this house, but we did still own it to this day, actually. Um, but, uh, you know, I think one thing when you look at this uh, and you see that the mortgage credit availability index, this is basically how easy it was to get a mortgage. And if you look at it in the lead up all the way to the peak of the market, when things just began to crash, that's when things changed. Today, we're in a very good place. You actually have to qualify for a mortgage. You actually got to prove that you can afford it. So that's a good thing. Number two, we simply didn't have, we, in, in, the, in the past several years, the, the price appreciation uh, that we had in 2000 and 2005. I mean, those were massive appreciation years. I mean, look at 2004 and 2005, 12.5%, you know, 11.4%. And look at our nice steady appreciation levels here. Nice and healthy, sustainable, you know, not gonna create this big bubble that everybody's concerned about, right? The third is our inventory levels. Lawrence Young with the National Association of Realtors, really smart guy, chief econ economist for the National Association of Realtors has been talking about this for years now. I watched him speak in Hilton Head not that long ago where he actually talked about how we just don't have the nationwide inventory levels that we did back then. You know, our levels today, 3.1 month supply. It's a great indicator of the health of the market. An 8.2 month supply back in 2007 was really significant and just put us on, on a path for, for a big real estate bubble. The fourth is houses really became way too expensive to buy. 25.4% of someone's median income was needed to purchase a median priced home in the United States. That's significant. Right now we're at 15.5%. And if you read through this, it'll talk about how, yeah, prices are higher right now. Um, we, we do have, you know, some more expensive real estate, but money's cheap. You know, we've got three and a half percent on average on a 30 year fixed mortgage conventional. That helps quite a bit and wages are up a little bit too. So that that's a considerable help to the overall health of the market. Lastly, people are equity rich and they're not tapped out. So, you know, in, in 05 to 07, people were using their houses like an ATM machine. 
they were probably taking trips down the Danube on the equity on their house. A lot of irresponsible behavior done with the equity in people's homes. And the values were shooting up so, so much. They had tons of equity to tap. So you had, in turn, ultimately, you know, people were hundreds of thousands of dollars upside down on their houses. So it was a it was a really bad situation and a recipe for disaster. And if you look at these numbers, you've got $824 billion in the three years, 05 to 07, in terms of total in, in, in refinance and billions. 17 to 19, we're talking 232 billion. I mean, a significant difference and a much, much healthier place. Far fewer Americans are underwater on their homes today. It's a very, very different situation. So I'm gonna switch back here and, and just tell you, you know, if, if your concerns about the real estate market um, is creating some anxiety, some PTSD from 2008, if you lived through that whole mess, which I did, um, wasn't a lot of fun as a real estate guy myself, uh, but we made through it. You know, we, we got through it. It had a beginning and an end, albeit that was a much, much longer than I, I would ever expect this to be. Um, and, and we know that this will have a beginning and an end. And hopefully this will be a quick, quick beginning and an end and we'll recover quickly and, and we'll be looking at, uh, at a, a return to a nice, healthy real estate market. But I'd encourage you, if you have some concerns, you got some PTSD, you know, book 30 minutes, 15 minutes with, with me or somebody on my team to talk about the real estate market, what's going on. We can talk about your house. Uh, it's no obligation. Um, you know, we I've, I've been in the business here for 17 years and um, our, our team is about giving back wherever we can. So please don't hesitate to reach out to us. And to that point, if you know of somebody or something or some issue in the community, a random act of need in the community, my team is here and ready to help. Um, we want to help in any way that we can and give back to a community that has given so much to, to us. So uh, thanks for checking this out. Tim Pierce with the Pierce Group at Keller Williams Realty. I hope you enjoyed the video and I hope it, uh, it calmed your anxiety a little bit about real estate. Thanks so much.